Good morning everybody and welcome to the third instalment in this worked exam answer series. Today I'm going to work through a back titration calculation question which then goes on to ask a few practical questions as well about the titration procedure itself which is a fairly common layout for questions of this nature within AQA. So we are first of all being asked to calculate the MR of a solution which we are then titrating against sodium hydroxide. So whenever I have done a titration or back titration calculation in the past I've always used my trusty red and purple pens for my acid and my alkali and this is going to be no different. I just feel for me it helps to draw my eyes to the correct piece of information and mean that I'm not going to accidentally be using the wrong volumes or the wrong concentrations in a particular calculation. So the first thing I'm going to do is highlight all of the information and then I'm going to talk through the steps that we should always be doing in a back titration calculation and then I'll explain how the final step can sometimes look different. Here we're trying to work out the MR but it may be in other questions that you're asked to work out the mass or the percentage by mass or something even a little bit different from that. But I'll start with my highlighting and I'll come back to you. Okay, so as well as doing my highlighting, I've also annotated a couple of things. So I've just made a point for my own benefit of recognising that the diprotic acid and the sodium hydroxide are going to react in a 1 to 2 molar ratio. And I've also converted the mass of H2A that was added to the 250 centimetres cubed of aqueous solution from milligrams into grams, because that is the standard unit for mass that we're going to be needing to use to work out the MR a little bit later. The other thing that I think it's really important to notice here, and this is what's slightly different about this particular back titration calculation, is that we are putting the sodium hydroxide into the conical flask. And we know that because it straight out tells us that we're using a pipette to add 25 centimetres cubed of the sodium hydroxide to the conical flask. In other questions, it tends to be the unknown solution or the solution that we want to find something out about into the conical flask. Whereas here we're doing that with the sodium hydroxide and that means that this information in this table um, for our titers has to be related to the H2A solution, which is going to make scaling up the number of moles a little bit more difficult. So that's all my information highlighted. Now, the four things that I think you will always be asked to do with a back titration calculation are as follows. Notice how we're starting with the last piece of information given and working backwards through the data. First thing, we're going to have to get the mean titer from this results table. So we're going to find our concordant results. We're going to add them and divide them by two. That's going to give me the mean titer of the H2A. We're then going to work out the moles of what we can, which in this case is the sodium hydroxide, because we have the volume and the concentration. So that's going to get us the moles of that. Then you would always use the balanced chemical equation to get the moles of the substance you want to find something out about, which for us is the H2A. That will tell us the moles in our mean titer volume. We then need to scale that up to get the moles in the 250 centimetres cube that we originally prepared. Those steps will always be the same. And then for us, the different step here for step five is then to calculate the MR using those moles and the mass, which I've already converted into grams. So let me do that for you now. So you can see that how I've set it out, I've in the blue pen listed the steps that we need to be doing for this particular question, where the first four steps are the same for every back titration calculation of this nature. Step five is where it differs. And like I've said here, we're trying to work out the MR. So first step is to get the mean titer. So only using our concordant results and we should never include the rough, even if that is concordant we get a mean titer of 26.45 centimetres cubed and that is for the H2A solution. Step two is always get the moles of what you can and what I mean by that is it will depend on what information you've got but we were given a volume and a concentration for the sodium hydroxide solution so that is what we can then work out the moles of which comes to 2.80 times 10 to the minus 3 once we've converted our volume into decimetres cubed. 
Step three is then to always get the moles of the other substance, which is usually what you're trying to figure something out about from our balanced chemical equation. So the ratio of the H2A to the NaOH is one to two. Therefore, I need to halve the moles of sodium hydroxide to give me 1.40 times 10 to the minus three moles of the H2A. Now that is going to be the moles of the H2A in the 26.45 centimeters cubed that we worked out in step one. And then the fourth step is to scale up the moles to get the number in the original solution and we made up 250 centimetres cubed initially. So this is why this isn't quite so nice, because if we were to put the H2A into the conical flask, it would measure 25 centimetres cubed and that's a nice times by 10 scale factor. Here it comes out as 9.45 to three significant figures. So I then times the 1.40 times 10 to the minus three moles by that scale factor to get 0.0132 moles in the original solution. From there, we can do step five, which is to get the MR, mass divided by moles. The mass I already converted from milligrams into grams. We've just got the moles. That gives me an MR of 98.2. Next up, we'll have a go at this uncertainty calculation. And then on the back, like I said, there's a couple of practical questions which we'll tackle as well. So when we're working out percentage uncertainty, we're thinking about the error on the piece of equipment that we're using, which in the pipettes instance is plus or minus 0 0.06 centimetres cubed. If we therefore measured out 25 centimetres cubed in the pipette, what we're saying is there is a chance that our percentage uncertainty when we use the pipette will be 0.24%. So that is kind of the range in which our answer might be bang on or slightly out, not because of anything that we've done, but because the equipment itself is never going to be perfect. So to work out percentage uncertainty, this is the uh, equation that we need to remember. So we take the absolute error on the equipment, which for the pipette, as we've said, is plus or minus 0.06, Divide it by whatever value you've measured using that piece of equipment, which was the 25 centimetres cubed of the sodium hydroxide, and then we're timesing it by 100 to get it as a percentage. Now, I have given my answer here as 0.24%. Ideally, we would probably want to give it to one significant figure only because 0 0.06 is to one significant figure. So 0 0.2, they have accepted 0 0.24 here. Um, either I think would be acceptable and in fact 0 0.2 is probably a better answer um, but 0 0.24 like I say was accepted on the mark scheme here. And finally, we'll have a look at these practical questions. So there's a few very common practical based questions that they'll ask around a titration. These are two of them. So the presence of air bubbles within the burette and why we can wash the inside of the conical flask mid experiment with distilled or deionized water. They may also ask why a conical flask is better than a beaker, why the funnel needs to be removed from the top of the burette when you start the titration, or they may also ask about what solutions we should or should not be rinsing the burette or the pipette with prior to doing that particular run through. So I'd highly recommend for this practical, but any practicals more generally, having a look at all the different types of questions that come up for those required practicals and obviously making sure that you understand why the practical steps are necessary, why we can't do them in a slightly different way or what problems would be caused by certain things been done incorrectly. So in terms of the air bubble, if there was an air bubble initially that was then then that was then not there, my apologies, at the end, the air bubble will initially be taking up space. And then when you open the tap, that air bubble will be decreasing the volume in the burette, but obviously no liquid or solution rather will actually be coming out of the burette at that time. So that's going to make it look like more volume was added from the burette than there actually was. And that's going to therefore increase um, the final burette reading and thus increase the titer. With regards to why we can wash the inside of the conical flask with distilled water partway through one of our experimental runs, the reason why we do that, first of all, 
is to ensure that whatever we're adding from the burette, which was uh, our H2A solution in this example, if we add it from the burette, particularly when we're doing it drop wise, if you add a drop from the burette into the flask, it may be that that drop is actually still kind of stuck on the neck of the conical flask, whereas obviously we want it to go down into the main body of the conical flask to actually react with the sodium hydroxide in there. So you'd use one of those washer bottles where you could kind of rinse around the neck with distilled water and that will ensure that all of the H2A or whatever it is that you're adding from the burette gets into the main body of the solution in the conical flask. That washing does not give us an incorrect result because adding distilled or deionized water will not change the number of moles of sodium hydroxide or the H2A in the solution. And so long as we've got the same number of moles, they are still going to uh, neutralize one another at the exact same point in time. Any questions about this bat titration calculation or any other bat titration calculations that you might come across or any requests for any other similar videos, please leave a comment on this video or get in touch with me via email or any of my social media platforms. I'm always willing to help. Hope you have a really lovely day, guys. Thank you very much for watching.